Do you wear goggles on every ride? Have you maybe even gone full enduro? But you feel like something is still missing? Super enduro? That sounds like fun. But what if it isn't super enough? It could be time for down duro. That's right. When Erlins sent over the latest incarnation of their downhill fork for testing, we decided it would be a good opportunity to find out just how far you can push an enduro build and still have a bike that can be used to earn your turns. Keep watching to find out how we got along. The DH38 first appeared two years ago and it went on to earn excellent reviews and race results under world champ Loic Bruni and the Specialized Factory team. We rode the fork at the launch in Sweden and we came away well impressed with the sensitivity, support and adjustability on offer. For this new M1 version, Erlins worked on a number of improvements intended primarily to reduce friction and improve sensitivity, as well as increase the serviceability thanks to a number of shared parts with the recently introduced RFX32 M2 single crown fork. The DH38 chassis remains the same, built around 38mm stanchions with four different crowns providing different offset options. The lowers are compatible with 29 inch tires up to 2.8 inches wide or 27.5 inch tires up to 3 inches wide. The standard travel is set at 200 mm but can be adjusted all the way down to 120 mm if you want to do something really weird. For our 27 inch down duro project, we opted for a 180 mm version with a 46 mm offset crown, leaving us as close as possible to the geometry of the 27 inch RXF36 single crown fork we were replacing. We also picked up a pair of Nukeproof's all-new Horizon wheels. They are rated for enduro and DH riding, which made them a perfect match for this build. To finalize the changes, we also mounted up a pair of E13's latest 80 tires, with the downhill casing in the rear and the enduro casing up front, Mopo compound for both of them. The DH38 fork weighed in at 2,858 grams, a weight penalty of about 750 grams compared to the single crown RXF36 that came off the bike. Together with the other component changes we made, we ended up adding about 1.2 kilos to the overall bike weight. Nothing too dramatic, but lifting the bike up and moving it around, the extra heft is certainly noticeable. The extra weight is of course one of the major factors to take into consideration when contemplating a dual crown build. You'll also notice the drastically increased turning radius, and for those who shuttle, you'll also notice that the bike now plays less nice with the tailgate of your truck. Would these inconveniences be worth it? Heading out on our regular enduro loops, the bike felt a little heavier, but seated pedaling performance was about the same as before. Standing up and mashing the pedals creates a lot of bob up front, as you'd expect from a long travel plush fork. There is no lockout to play with on a DH fork, so take that into account if that is the kind of climbing you enjoy doing. With the axle to crown measurement within a couple of millimeters of the fork it replaced, we didn't feel like we were hanging off the back any more than before with the DH38, and overall pedaling performance really remained quite similar. When the trail pointed downwards, it should come as no surprise that the DH38 began to shine bright. As the speeds picked up, we found the fork noticeably more poised than the single crown RXF, and the increased stiffness really made a difference on steeper trails and under heavy braking. The DH38 provides ample support, but also plenty of sensitivity deep into its travel, which took a lot of drama out of the trails we ride day to day. The extra ramp-up air chamber is a boon for those who like to tinker with their setup, and it allowed us to really find the sweet spot between support sensitivity and bottom-out control. The fork does feel less poppy than the single crown RXF36 it replaced here, and the extra weight also means that you'll have to pull a bit harder to make those bonus gaps on the trail, but you'll soon be going faster than you were before, which probably makes up for it. And when it comes to the bigger hits, the DH38 feels absolutely bottomless, even in the shortened version we tested here. In summary, as the trail gets gnarlier, the DH38 provides incrementally more confidence and control than its single crown brethren, and our test bike really felt like it started to blur the lines between downhill and enduro. A DH bike that you can easily pedal to the top? Yep, that's pretty much where we landed with this project. The adjustments on the DH38 provide what Erlins calls usable range which means that even if you run them fully open or closed, you can still use the product. We settled on fully open high-speed compression with just a few clicks of low-speed compression for support, with the rebound in the middle of the 16 clicks on offer for control. The main air spring was set at about 120 psi, which is the recommended pressure for this rider's test weight, while the ramp-up chamber was set to 200 psi, a little bit less than the recommended starting point. 
We found this setup to provide plenty of support while maintaining sensitivity at all points in the stroke, only occasionally using up all the travel on the biggest hits. Bottom out events are very well managed and we never once felt like the fork was about to be overwhelmed. So is a down duro build in the cards for you? If you tend to rack up a lot of miles on your rides, or if the trails where you live are slightly less steep, we'd probably recommend sticking to a single crown setup to retain the liveliness of your bike's character and to keep the weight low. If, on the other hand, you often find yourself riding steeper and gnarlier terrain, or if you happen to live close to a bike park, putting a downhill fork on your enduro frame starts to make a lot of sense. The downhill fork provides a level of comfort and confidence that the single crown fork would be hard pressed to match. And thanks to the lower crown being slightly less tall on the downhill fork than on the single crown fork, it's also actually pretty easy to retain your bike's geometry, especially if you opt to reduce the travel on the downhill fork a little bit. Having a DH fork on standby for park duty, along with an extra set of wheels, could also make a lot of sense. In either case, make sure your frame can take it, because not all enduro frames are built to handle a downhill fork. As for the fork itself, we have nothing but good things to say about the new DH38 M1 at this point. It provides all the adjustability you could need and awesome comfort and control out on the trail, whether it's on a down duro project build like the bike we presented here today, or on your favorite downhill bike. Thanks for taking the time to tune in and check out this review. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And until next time, happy trails.